So. And welcome to another episode of the Rockbridge High School Roundtable. Uh, thank you, Thin Lizzy, for bringing us into this episode. Um, the boys are back in town. We are back. The NCAA March Madness Basketball Tournament is back today, the Sweet 16. And Major League Baseball, sooner or later, it will also be back. Uh, so first and foremost, the sports topic, the uh, just infatuating, infatuating, uh, Topic, ah, oh, frick, okay, Dude, no, it's, it's, it's been a while, it's been a while. It's good, it's good. So, uh, the event in sports that really uh, captures all of our attention uh, in this country is NCAA basketball tournament, March Madness. My bracket is completely ruined. Cam, what about yours? Yeah, I picked uh, Duke <laughs> in uh, our uh, journalism uh, bracket pool, so that was, that was a, a misstep, yeah. uh, for yeah. sure. Glad uh, South Carolina made their first suit sixteen, uh-huh. but uh, if I if I could go back and uh, you know make a few changes here and there, I I think everyone could agree that they wish they could do that. So yeah. uh, undoubtedly, I mean the this is this is the part of the year where regrets just run wild. You For know? sure. I mean, um, but it is what it is. I I also had Duke in my championship game. Um, ESPN actually uh, has a new thing where you can, you know, remake your bracket starting from the Sweet 16, which I think is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did that. Uh, I ended up having, uh, I believe, North Carolina and Arizona in my championship game. Um, that could be completely wrong, but teams look good, yeah, talented, yeah. experienced. Uh, Cam, if, if you had to pick one team that's left in the tournament to make a run for the, tur- uh, for the championship right now, who would it be? Well, in my other brackets, funny you ask that. Uh, I think uh, North Carolina has a really good shot to to go all the way. They're they're hot right now. Um, but uh, I mean, another team. You know, everyone's talking about them right now. But uh, uh, Michigan. Uh, I don't want to get too crazy about them just yet. I just haven't seen. Right, yes, right, right. but I will say I think they were way you know underseeded. I think they should have been a little bit higher. And I think that a lot of teams, you know, just like a few years ago when they, they made that crazy run all the yeah, way to the, the, the national yeah. championship game, they, a lot of people, you know, even though they started getting really hot, a lot of people didn't expect them to make it out uh, of, each, of each round. So I think it's important that we keep in mind that they're, they're still a great team. I think it's important that the teams that are going to be playing them uh, keep that in mind as well. Yeah, and... Um... You know, this is just the time of the year where talent, experience kind of go out the window. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously those are advantages, but it's really who's playing the best basketball. Totally. And uh, it pains me to say it because I'm really not a fan of these two teams at all, but Kansas and UCLA, yeah. cool. do they look good? Do they Dang. look good? Um, yeah. So moving on from the, uh, from the hardwood to the, the baseball field, uh, the World Baseball Classic just wrapped itself up last night with the United States winning its first... Ooh. It's first WBC final against a, a stout, competitive, uh, talented team in Puerto Rico. Uh, score was a blowout, eight to nothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, in terms of Rockbridge, I think this has been the most popular WBC um, that I've experienced over, over my past four years, um, and really the most popular this tournament has been in the U.S. for a while. And so. Um, some people are saying, you know, it, it shouldn't happen. The Olympics don't have baseball. Why should the WBC be a thing? Um, Cam, do you think the World Baseball Classic should be a thing? Why or why not? Well, I will say that the excitement that I have seen, like you said, uh, has been unmatched. I, I honestly have never paid attention to the World Baseball Classic until this year. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with uh, a personal favor of mine, Eric Hosmer, being a, a, a integral part of the U.S. team, but also just the U.S. team being uh, as successful as successful as they have been. Uh, keeping that in mind, you really have to make sure that other teams are, you know, still being able to, you know, have excitement, because if there's really only one country that's getting excited about it each year, you know, it's not going to be an international spectacle, uh, you know, so... Uh, something to keep in mind, not that I think that the U.S. completely ran over everyone because they lost the Dominican Republic uh, uh, pretty early on, but, I mean, 
still uh, something to keep in mind. I, I think it was a fun year, though. I, I, I think to see the overall impact of it, we're going to have to wait a little while, though. Yeah. And, I mean, you mentioned that the, that the international uh, influence of this tournament is not um, all that big, but, um, you know, if you look at the energy that the fans in the DR, fans in Puerto Rico bring, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Um, For you know, sure. Being, being Korean, um, I can kind of speak to just how big – the KBO, the Korean baseball organization, um, is in, in Korea and mm -hmm. how big baseball is in East Asia as a whole. And it is enormous. I mean, the influence and the energy that surrounds that sport is, is huge. And so these fans, these players, they look forward to this tournament every single year. And really, I think it's been the U.S. that's kind of been uh, kind of been in the backseat. And so uh, being able to put this title under, under the belts of the U.S. players, I think it's just going to raise the energy even more and it's even more of a reason to continue playing this tournament. Um, every three, four years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, also, you have teams like Israel, you know? I mean, you, you, you never think of Israel as being a team that has an, has an influence in the U.S., but um, they made it to the, to the uh, second round this year. And so um, Netherlands also had, had an impressive run. And so teams, teams like that, yeah, I, it's, just, it's just fun to watch. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good baseball. It's fun to watch. Um, awesome. Now moving from international baseball to more um, – Nationally based baseball, I guess. Major League Baseball uh, is starting up here pretty soon. Spring training winds down and opening day nears closer and closer. Uh, it is a little early. It is very early. Yeah. But, uh, Cam, if you had to pick a team out of the National League and a team out of the American League and those teams play in the World Series, oh. who are those teams and who wins that big shiny trophy? Uh, American League, uh, I think it, it's pretty obvious to anyone that's been paying attention uh, over just the, the last season uh, or, or previous season, it, it has to be uh, the Indians. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, Cleveland is right, you know, they, they really want this one. I think it, after a pretty uh, embarrassing loss to the Cubs uh, in the uh, World Series, you know, they're, they're going to be put, going all in. I, I, I think they are no longer looking to be a long-term, you know, uh, team. They're, they're, as a franchise, they're really just going for this one. Yeah. Uh, and so, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, getting a World Series like that can really boost uh, a team's, you know, momentum for a long period. So, you know, you, you never know. But uh, I, honestly, uh, on the National League side, I, I honestly don't know. Uh, it's... To me, it seems like it go, could go a lot of ways. I think the Cubs, you know, they they possibly still have enough in them to, to make another run. Uh, but honestly, I, 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 could, I don't know that I could say. Yeah. Um, I think the American League, I mean, you're right. Uh, yeah. It's got to be the got to be Cleveland. Um, Carlos Carrasco is going to be back. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that was the dig on the Indians' offseason was they're not getting pitching back. They're getting a, a solidified, bona fide number two starter who could be an ace on 15 teams in the league. Yeah. And so just because they didn't get out and get the names like, like the Red Sox did and Chris Sale, I don't think that the staff for the Indians is going to be a problem. We all know that the Cleveland bullpen is lights out. Um, they picked up a huge bat in Edwin Carnacion, mm -hmm. um, a healthy Michael Brantley playing left fielder, center field, and hitting fifth or, sixth the, fifth or sixth in that lineup is going to be deadly. Jason Kipnis is out for the first couple weeks, but I don't think it's really going to matter in the long run. The Indians are going to be a dirty, dirty team this year. Yeah. Um, in the National League, you know, last year going into the playoffs, a lot of people had the Giants. This year, I think even more so the Giants. After picking up Mark Melanson to sure up that bullpen um, and sure up yet another embarrassing uh, loss in, in Game 4 of the NLDS, um, just letting a, letting a significant lead slip through the cracks. Um, but, yeah, uh, at the end of the year, I think I've, I've got to say uh, Indians over Giants. Yep. In, in, in five games. Um, well, that's that's all from us today. Thank you for tuning into another episode of the Rapper Round Table. I'm Jiho Lee. I'm Cam Fuller. And we'll see you after spring break. Have a nice, have a nice week.